a very warm good morning to one and all present here i welcome the chief guest of today's event dr b n shrinivasa murthy sir director at icer indian institute of horticultural research bangalore honorable director sir ifpt respected speakers and the dear participants i really appreciate all of you for taking your time off to be with us for the today's webinar it is inspiring to share that the today's webinar has been organized under the banner of azadi ka amrit mahotsav promoting the atmanirbhar bharat as a part of this theme prime minister formalization of micro food processing enterprises our today's webinar is on tomato processing and value addition so without taking any further time i would like to invite dr v r sinija ma'am professor and pmsme coordinator for the welcome address please thank you silke respected chief guest dr b n shrinivasamurthy sir director icar indian institute of horticulture research bangalore respected director of indian institute of food processing technology dr c andra makshnan sir reputed speakers from various industries as well as uh, academic and research organizations participants from across the country and dear colleagues a pleasant morning to all and this is the sixth odop webinar iafpt is hosting on the occasion of 75th year celebration of our country's independence asadi ka amrit mahotsav under pmfme scheme and as you all are aware pmfme scheme uh, launched by ministry of food processing industries last year june and it is uh, successfully running uh, for the upgradation of micro food processing enterprises Uh, spread across our country uh, so this odop concept is also uh, a very beautiful concept launched in the, under this scheme to promote and also to uh, publicize the local products of our country nationally as well as internationally and uh, if we consider tomato 32 districts from 11 states has selected tomato as the odop uh, under this scheme and uh, uh, including this bihar uh, chatisgarh haryana up uh, mp rajasthan punjab so today uh, actually we are fortunate to have a very eminent agricultural scientist uh, dr b n shrinivasa murthy sir as the chief guest for inaugurating this uh, uh, webinar on tomato processing and value addition and sir has served uh, at various positions in various um, in our ministries and uh, developed various genotypes and uh, soilless cultivation like that so many uh, new findings for the welfare of the farmers also so thank you so much sir for accepting our invitation on a short notice and uh, uh, be with us today on behalf of director uh, entire staff of iafpt and all the participants i uh, cordially welcome you for this inaugural session and next i would like to welcome our uh, respected director sir uh, he is always uh, supporting and motivating us and also uh, for conducting this program he has given all the uh, guidance so welcoming you on behalf of entire staff and all the participants for to this uh, webinar inaugural session sir and next i would like to extend a warm welcome to our uh, speakers eminent speakers from various industries as well as organizations uh, who will be delivering their uh, lectures today and i'm sure that these lectures will be beneficial to all our participants and uh, next i would like to extend a warm welcome to all our participants who are actually the backbone for uh, this webinar and always they are supporting us to organize uh, more such seminars uh and uh, extending the same cooperation from expecting the same cooperation from you for the future uh, programs also so uh, i welcome you all for this uh, webinar's inaugural session and also i welcome all our uh, staff uh, my colleagues and the pmfme team of iafpt once again welcoming you all and uh, hope that this seminar will be beneficial to uh, all the people who will be attending this uh, session and also uh, who will be applying for the pmfme scheme to get the benefit of the scheme so welcoming you all once again thank you jai hind uh once again thank you so much for our uh, srinivasa murthy sir and all the innovators today 
from ministry and the other uh, ministry people and especially our economic advisor joined today for this meeting as well and uh, this is the week we are celebrating uh, asadika amrut mahosha from ministry side ministry of food processing industry is celebrating the whole week from 6 to 12th continuous program has been organized by the ministry of food processing industry this is the first program we are starting with the uh, webinar on tomato processing and value addition and the, all we aware of the just now dr sunija is mentioned about uh, uh, our pmfme scheme and in this series we have done lot of series of program and uh, we invited very late uh, to our uh, sinivas samuthi sir and thank you so much sir for accepting our invitation being with us and all of you well aware of that sas contribution especially on the grape and pomegranate and all the horticulture crops uh apart from that if you look at ihr is uh, moving lot of uh, innovations in the ihr mainly for the industrial linkages one of the uh, icr institution doing lot of uh, technology transfer especially for the horticulture crops and recent past this uh, transformation from ihr really is made us to proud and we wanted to work very closely with ihr and uh, when we came to know our sir has taken over as a director we are very happy sir congratulation to you and we are uh, hoping a long relation with ifpt and ihr sir and once again on behalf of ministry and behalf of ifpt and all the participants i welcome you for today's program sir and uh, tomato processing uh, we know that just one week before we have seen lot of news around the country continuously our country is facing such type of problems because of we are sometime over uh, production is coming and market is not allowed to accept that much amount of the productions and what to do that we need to look at what is the other alternatives even if you look at almost 300 million metric tons we produce this uh, fruits and vegetable around that uh, 199 million metric tons of fruits and among that 16 million metric tons almost 16% of the products comes from the tomato itself and if the production is cross some particular level and uh, over and above we are importing as well because of the some of the other reasons like uh, table varieties and processable varieties some of the things are there but still how to convert this excess production into the value added product that is the uh, key element and uh, we need to look what are the other alternative and psychologically how we can change our people mindset still we try to use the fresh tomato for our most of the preparations in indian kitchens so that has to be changed like how we have changed the uh, ginger garlic paste or now we are slowly changing into the onion paste as well then we have to go for the tomato ketchup or tomato puree how to use this tomato puree into the our daily usage if you able to do that that self life problems and other issues can be sorted out over and above our rate stabilization can be done that's what we need to think food processing is the one ideal vehicle to make such things to happen like um, one is the price stabilization second is a nutritional delivery system even tomato itself if you consider 95% is the water remaining 5% we have enormous nutrition and other things are there so how to make that things to more available to us either lycopene if you take it or beta carotene if you take it whatever the compound you are talked most of the vitamins minerals all are available with that 5 to 6% and how to make it this is the more available to us and how to handle this one from the harvest to the complete your plate that is the great challenge and uh, as dr sanjeev mentioned about pmfme scheme is almost now one year over and already we could able to see that clear visual success of this pmfme scheme because in india if you look at more than 90% of the industries are come for the micro and medium small scale industry and this is the one driving force for the indian economy as well as especially for the food industry side the bigger industry contributes a 10% but 90% is comes from micro medium industry and it's cons- contribute local economy employment as well and how to improve this if you strengthen this micro enterprises from the farm gate to the traders when it comes for the small scale industries and micro industry with you strengthen the whole this value chain so definitely we can reduce the wastage of whatever we produce in the our field yes we produce record number world number 1 and 2 most of the commodities including the fruits and vegetable and if we how to strengthen 
this our micro units that's what our clear target that's what it has been uh, rolled out and if you invest 3 lakh rupees from your side government is providing 10 lakh subsidy 17 lakh loan also arranged by the government of india if you look at any schemes right now in the country or the globe this is the one scheme the full support has been given not only that if you look at the whole architecture of the pmfme scheme one layer is the like uh, approval application and other second thing where this micro enterprises will go and put the applications they used to find some consultant this scheme also he added the drps in the district level resource persons already in play, place in the most of the districts just you need to talk to them they will help you to formulate getting the gst number getting the fssa number all the application process they will hand hold the charges for them is paid by the government of india 20000 rupees will be paid for the this drps the whole structure made such a bottom up approach this PMFME scheme, the one district, one product is not new. It is a concept is evolved in 1978, the one village, one product in the Japan. It they, Japan is tested very well that success of that. So we wanted to replicate that model into India and ministry has made a lot of uh, fine tuning of that model to make so the bottom up approach. That's what I said. DRPs are just nearby you. Just, you need to approach them anyone wanted to do the food business this is the ideal time india's market size 263 billion dollar size now is going to be a 535 billion dollar size in another five years time such a biggest market size available anyone easily get into this business and just you need a will to do the business and extra just three lakh rupees if you have it you can start your business with the 30 lakhs investment. That is the, the whole framework of uh, this PMFME. And if you look at Madhya Pradesh, nine district has been selected uh, ODOP in the tomato and Jargant four and Chhattisgarh four, Bihar is three and other Punjab, Maharashtra and all one one. So most of the highest number of the district is selected as the tomato. So how to convert this into the value added product? That's what the small units in these districts like a 30 plus districts in our country has to look into that. So you can go for the puree or uh, maybe uh, Sinivas Muthi sir can explain a little bit more and uh, maybe from the IHR scientist is going to speak about a little bit on the value addition and that. But this is the time, ideal time, either farmers, producers, company or start, startups, anyone can get into that business, you can make it. And we have to encourage more units using the tomatoes and other vegetables like onion, and potato and all. So that's what I said. One side, we are looking for the rate stabilization. Another side is employment. Over and over, that local economy, especially our village and rural area economy will improve when we are going for such a level of investment in the micro units. So that's what today we are organizing this uh, tomato processing and value addition program under the PMFME scheme and we are kickstarting from our Ministry of Food Processing Industry, the week-long celebration of Asadika Amrut Magoschow, that 75th year of our independence. And thank you so much, our Sinima Samuti, sir, to join today. And over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it's my profound pleasure to now invite our today's chief guest, Dr. B. N. Srinivasa Murthy, sir, Director at ICAR, Indian Institute of Horticulture Research, Bangalore. Sir has completed his undergraduate and postgraduate degrees from University of Agriculture Sciences, Bangalore and obtained PhD University from Guelph, Canada as the Commonwealth Scholar. Before joining as the Director of ICAR IIHR, Sir was the Commissioner of Horticulture Department of Agriculture Corporation and Farmer Welfare in the Ministry of Agriculture, Government of India on 29th May 2017 and holding the additional charge of Chairman, Coconut Development Board, Government of India. In his professional career, Sir has developed and released eight great hybrids, three pomegranate hybrids, one strawberry and two passion fruit hybrids. Some of them are popular in farmer's field. Introduced over 200 genotypes of pomegranate from USDA and developed pomegranate germ plus block at IHR with over 350 associates. Sir has perfected technology for soilless culture and vertigrow systems for strawberry for peri-urban horticulture. And Sir has also published over 80 research articles 
in the peer reviewed national and international journals over 30 40 popular articles technical bulletins and book chapters so has organized group of farmers for to promote cultivation and export food crops like pomegranate grapes and mango being tech savvy introduced drone based services at the institute and to his credit he has also developed mobile apps on crops like pomegranate and custard Sir is the recipient of Aryabhatta Award, Fellow of Society for Advancement of Research on Pomegranate Solanpur. He is also received Commonwealth Scholar of Canadian, uh, Canadian Commonwealth Association. I would like to invite Sir to address our gathering. We welcome you, Sir. Very good morning to all of you. Thank you, Silky, for introducing me with the long biodata that what I have <coughs> achieved. This could not have been uh, possible because of our uh, hard and uh, um, and also the innovative things that our farmers have started. These farmers are our backbone. Because of them, we are here. With a big salute to our Indian farmers, I'm going to start my presentation, and uh, just my address rather, not a presentation. Most respected uh, director of uh, IIFPT, uh, innovative person who has a lot of vision. I was uh, just looking into your biodata, sir, uh, Anand Ramakrishnan, for your great contribution to our uh, Indian food processing industry. Uh, I am looking from the production angle, uh, as a horticulturist, and uh, but the farmers are suffering, and the tomato is one such crop, the most uh, suffered uh, crop uh, growers in the country. So, with this uh, little background and all other uh, resource persons uh, who are joined here, and also the participants, the most important one uh, are those people who are going to take benefit of this particular webinar. And I congratulate IFPT for uh, arranging this particular webinar. When you look at the production aspects and uh, the challenges that we have in a crop like tomato, although this concept of ODOP came into existence a uh, long back uh, in uh, Japan, as you rightly pointed out, but in India, I, in, it seems uh, about uh, three years back in our ministry, when I was a uh, horticulture commissioner, we were discussing about how to uh, scale up the production and uh, give a branding for our uh, uh, GI crops, GI agricultural education crops. Uh, there are about uh, 35 horticulture crops were there. In that uh, one of our meetings of senior officers, our secretary has indicated uh, how to go about, what to do, and other things. With this uh, this particular body of the concept, what we are discussing uh, has originated. Although Uttar Pradesh is one one uh, state that has uh, taken up a little forward in this manner, in uh, 2020 budget, uh, this was announced uh, ODOP as uh, one of our concept. In fact, uh, I was also one of those uh, person who are involved in developing this uh, uh, ODOP concept. In fact, uh, there are about uh, 37 states as of now, uh, including Union Territories, of course, 29 plus uh, other uh, uh, 29 and other eight uh, Union Territories with uh, 705 districts where ODOP crops have been announced so far. So uh, out of these, uh, there are about 147 crops, 147 products are there apart from tomato. Tomato is one of them. As you rightly pointed out, about uh, 32 districts have been covered under a tomato crop in uh, 11 districts. And uh, I'm proud to say that uh, out of uh, 705 districts, 406 are based on for horticulture crops. You know the importance of uh, the horticulture crops. Though the production is about uh, 329 million tons of uh, fruits and vegetables and other horticulture crops, we are producing more but the challenge remains that the distribution part, the wastage part, we see about uh, 28 to 30% of uh, wastage in uh, horticulture crops, especially horticulture crops because of their nature of uh, perishability with high water content. As we see, tomato has about uh, 4 to 5% of uh, total soluble solids, the present day varieties, what we grow in India. 95% is other products like water, other than total soluble solids. So this is the kind of uh, the crop or the products that we are uh, dealing with. With this kind of uh, background, there is a loss is humongous, humongous. And the price fluctuation in among the crops is uh, uh, of the three crops. So what we saw is a challenging crops in horticulture. That is the top crops. Our uh, <clears throat> Prime Minister has uh, rightly coined in uh, some, one of those uh, independent speeches, tomato, onion, and potato. A uh, tomato is one of those crops which is highly challenging in when it comes to price fluctuation. Although we can grow uh, tomato in uh, almost uh, all the seasons in different states, uh, but uh, in some of the northern states, because of the high temperature in summer months, it is very difficult to grow. 
So the price fluctuation is very high, excepting for this particular year. It is uh, uh, almost every year, July to September is the one that is the peak price. And January, February, March is the place which is a lot of glut. This year, unfortunately, unfortunately many farmers face the problem of uh, disposal of tomato. Um, there are several reasons for this. When we come to India, about uh, 192 tons of uh, vegetables are grow we are growing, out of which uh, about 20 million tons are tomato. 50 plus is a uh, tomato, uh, uh, is potato. 20 million tons is uh, tomato itself. We stand in uh, second next to China. Uh, China produces about uh, 61.63 million tons. And USA, about 96.8 million tons. Portugal, about uh, 48 tons. That is the productivity rather. And uh, uh, world total uh, production is about 4.6. Six, seven, six million hectares, out of which uh, production is about 182.25 million tons, with a productivity of about 38.2 million tons. China, the uh, productivity is about uh, 46.8 million tons, uh, 46.8 tons per hectare. USA is the highest with uh, 96.8 tons per hectare, and India goes with uh, just uh, 24.6 million, uh, 24.6 tons per hectare. When it comes to processing, tomato is we are processing only about 3% of our total production. So there is a vast scope, uh, including our institute, uh, many NAR system, National Agriculture Research System, have developed a processing of uh, tomato. But unfortunately, we are not having many good varieties that is suitable for processing itself. There is no dedicated variety. Of course, there are uh, attempts here and there from uh, both the uh, public sector and uh, commercial uh, seed production companies. But the requirement of uh, processing uh, varieties is totally different. We cannot switch totally to processing uh, tomato varieties uh, for cultivation. There should be buyers also. So in this scenario, good balance is for going for a contract farming. Some of these processing industries should come forward and have a contract with the farmers. Our uh, recent uh, government policies also made uh, this particular thing very easy. and. Uh, Tomato, since uh, it is almost available throughout the year, the food processing industry will not uh, suffer for want of uh, raw material. This is one of the best uh, examples of uh, food, for food processing industry to run almost about uh, 11 to 12 months uh, uh, in a year. And uh, there is a range of products that can be prepared. Our uh, One of our scientists, uh, Dr. Boneshwari, is also going to join and uh, she is going to give uh, the products that we are uh, uh, process it, uh, Indian Institute of Horticulture Research, and we have developed a couple of varieties suitable for processing. The requirement of uh, processable varieties is that it has to be uh, indeterminate or uh, uh, determinate or semi-determinate. That is uh, on Arka Apeksha and Arka Vishesha are uh, two uh, hybrids we have developed that has the potential about uh, 75 to 80 tons per hectare. That is twice the national average of tomato production in our country. And uh, many states are uh, growing tomatoes, including uh, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, and Maharashtra. These two varieties are suitable for these regions also. That way, we can go in for uh, taking up uh, these uh, processable varieties. There, initially, there is need to boost dual purpose varieties. If there is a glut in the uh, table tomato production, we can just divert them into industries. Later on, we can go for uh, contract farming with the industry coming forward to process the tomatoes. There are uh, several schemes of Government of India. ODOP itself is uh, one of those schemes which have been uh, uh, demarcated for uh, uh, avoiding the food loss by processing some of the products. And uh, the present day, the, whatever the varieties that we are processing in tomato, they are having a lot of water. Uh, about 4.5 to uh, 3, uh, 4 to 4.5% 4, 4. is only the TSS. So when you are processing that kind of uh, varieties, that too when uh, uh, the prices are uh, below uh, 3 rupees or 2 rupees in the market, uh, the processor are procuring and processing, and that will add to cost of, product, cost of production or cost of processing because they have to remove a lot of water. Because unless uh, we have a dedicated varieties for uh, processing, this cost is going to high. Our uh, nature of consumption of uh, the fresh fruits uh, or vegetables, 
that doesn't uh, promote the consumption of uh, vegetables unless the cost of uh, vegetables is too high. Sometimes it goes to about uh, 60 or 70 rupees for tomato. That time only people think about uh, uh, consuming the process products. But if we are ready and uh, have a mapping of uh, whatever the areas that is being, tomato is being grown and we can control the area as well as the uh, production part, definitely the price is going to be stabilized. And there are several uh, incentives that is available for fruit processing industries. The uh, recently announced uh, FPOs, that is one of those things which can uh, take a shape and also the uh, farmers which are, who are producing tomatoes, they can farm FPOs and uh, there is a provision for financial assistance of about 16 lakhs rupees as grant and also for uh, running their business, about 30,000 rupees for day-to-day uh, -day expenses per month, uh, available for uh, FPO formation and uh, there are about uh, 10,000 uh, FPOs to be formed in the coming three years, out of which about 1,500 are targeted in the current financial year. And uh, the most important thing is Agriculture Infrastructure Fund that the Government of India has announced. That is 1 lakh uh, crore rupees as uh, seed money that is available for uh, the industries to take up uh, for, uh, especially for uh, post-harvest operations. In this, uh, about 3% uh, interest subvention is there. Uh, 2 crore rupees as uh, without collateral. Interest subvention of uh, three to three uh, uh, six months to about uh, two years for interest subvention. Interest subvention. With this kind of uh, in, uh, infrastructure facilities for uh, the industries, they can take up and start their business. But tomato uh, availability for uh, uh, for processing, the variety is also very important. That what I talked to you about a few minutes back. They have to be they have to mature at the same time. Almost uh, harvesting may be in a single harvest so that the cost of harvesting is uh, less and suitability for mechanization. Plus, uh, the, there, there should be a giantless type. The stock should not be get adhered to the fruit. These are some of those things uh, that is required for uh, as a variety in tomato. And there are quite a few industries, uh, both macro and micro industries, uh, as we see, uh, Kisan, Del Monte, Tiffy, are all already available in the business, but our target as we are looking for ODOP, uh, the micro and uh, um, medium industries, they should come forward for that a lot of infrastructure is uh, facilities for creation is available. ODOP is one of those best concepts that has been conceived from government of India. I request all the participants to take this particular benefit and also from this webinar, many of these technical inputs that our uh, resource persons are going to give, that will be most helpful. And we are at the Indian Institute of Horticulture Research. We are dealing with about uh, 54 different horticulture crops. Ours is a 54th uh, year uh, uh, institution. Just yesterday, we completed uh, 54 years. And tomorrow, we are going to celebrate the uh, 55th uh, year of uh, our existence. And uh, the concept of uh, doubling farmer's income, it is just a concept you can think about. There is a scope for Increasing the farmer's income, if we stop the losses that is happening to uh, horticulture crops, especially horticulture crops, there is a talk about a diversification from uh, wheat and uh, rice towards the majority of the horticulture crops. Tomato is one such crop where the if we develop the processing industry properly and give our farmers uh, the due share, is one of those things that can uh, they can take benefit. And the other uh, Government of India scheme that was operation schemes, that was conceptualized uh, for uh, promotion of uh, the three crops, potato, tomato, and onion. Tomato is one such crop where the transport subsidy is also available now. Storage subsidy. Storage, of course, is uh, challenging in tomato. Of course, uh, about uh, 20 to 30 days, it can be stored. Some technology is available. But if you can convert this uh, tomato into a product that can be stored for long, and there is scope for export also, branding, export, these are the areas we should think. There is a uh, Government of India, uh, Ministry of Commerce is also coming out with uh, clusters for uh, development of uh, the crops. Tomato is one of those crops uh, which have been selected out of 46, uh, 48 clusters for promotion of export. There is a very good scope uh, for exporting to Middle East and even to many of the North American countries and also European countries. The, some of the requirement we should meet for that to happen. We should work together. With these few remarks, I thank uh, the direct IFPT for giving me this opportunity and also all the participants for quietly listening to me for this my short presentation. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much, sir, for sharing such knowledgeable thoughts with us. Now, I would like to invite Dr. D. V. Chidanand, sir, Assistant Professor and Head, IAC IFPT, for a formal vote of thanks, please. Respected uh, Chief Guest, uh, Dr. Mayor Sinas uh, Murthy, sir, Director, ICR, Indian Institute of Particulture Research, Dr. C. Anandam Krishnan, sir, Director, Indian Institute of Proposing Technology, and resource persons and faculties and participants. Good morning to all. I deem it's a privilege to extend a vote of thanks in this uh, event on behalf of uh, Ministry of Proposing Industries and IAPT family. Sincerely thank our chief guest, Dr. B. N. Sinvas Murthy, sir, uh, Director, ICR, IAHR, who has made his gracious presence in today's program. So in spite of his uh, busy schedule, then we would like to thank our uh, beloved uh, director, sir, Dr. C. Anandam Krishnan, sir, for his continuous uh, support for organizing this event in a fruitful manner. Also, I thank the Ministry of Food Processing Industries because this week we are conducting uh, uh, Ajadika Amrut Maso in our ministry. So, on this, uh, uh, the providing opportunity of conducting uh, this program to us. And once again, thank to Ministry of Processing Industries. And also, we extremely thank to all resource persons uh, and they are going to deliver valuable inputs in this uh, uh, program. And also, I would like to thank all the participants from all over India who are all uh, participating in this uh, program. And then I thank to all uh, uh, departments and faculties and staffs for the valuable inputs for making the program uh, successful. Also, I thank all the, uh, all the uh, participants uh, for, for this program. Uh, finally, I, I give a special thanks to uh, PMFME team and computer team for their support. Once again, uh, thank you, Anandar, for presenting the program. So, thank you. Jai.